a couple of weeks late to the party, I know, but uh, this is something that I did actually want to cover. I've just been very busy. Uh, I, I mean, everyone knows that me and Frankie Boyle have a few problems with each other. Uh, Frankie thinks that I'm alt right, and I think that Frankie has absolutely no fucking idea what alt right even means. Because <laughs> uh, he's one of those. See, see how one of those like privileged people that act like they're political experts. You know, he acts like a voice for the working man and all that. When when he's anything but, he's actually clueless uh, about the everyday the, the you know the the business of the everyman but he tries to act like i'm one of you really while he lounges by his pool sipping cristal and all that yeah he's, he's one of them and he's a bit of an idiot and he's a uh, one of the finest examples of someone pulling the ladder up behind him you know he says that offensive comedy and comedy that punches down and blah blah and all this type of stuff is wrong and it's terrible and it's horrible now and you shouldn't do that comedy should always punch up uh, and all that stuff even though he literally built his entire career on uh, making offensive jokes, you know. I mean, if he feels that strongly, I think he should give all of his money back. That's blood money. That's blood money, Frank. You should give every single penny of it back. However, uh, Frankie Boyle also made a statement saying that cancel culture is not real. He said it's not real, and uh, here he is uh, getting cancelled for a joke he made. Uh, Frankie Boyle controversy as comic makes a rape joke about TV presenter Holly Willoughby. The controversial Scottish comedian, uh, maybe he was at one point, Frankie Boyle has been criticised for making a rape joke about TV presenter Holly Willoughby. Uh, Boyle, a former geography teacher, described a game about killing and shagging people, which included Miss Willoughby, during a stand-up appearance at the Latitude Festival in Suffolk. Audience members insist that Boyle said, I'd obviously kill her and rape her afterwards. I'm joking, I'd rape her first. Lovely. Uh, Boyle49 defended the remarks when questioned by an audience member at a Waterstones launch event for his latest novel. Uh, he maintained, can I just say, my routine about raping and fucking Holly, Holly Willoughby was part of a very long routine about whether or not it's okay to do a joke about that, and I look at it from both sides, there are pluses and minuses. However, you did use that subcontext of, is it okay to joke about this, and then you make the joke. Right, but however, you should be able to make any joke whatever you want, even if you didn't provide, you know, that little bit of subtext there. You should have been able to go on stage and say that, after all, that's how comedy works, isn't it, Frankie? I mean, that's what you believed, at least at one point. Uh, the Glaswegian, who is infamous for poor taste Jones, Jesus Christ, man, there's been so many spelling mistakes in this article, jokes about the death of Princess Diana, added that comedy was in the eye of the beholder, stating that he was a mainstream comedian. Yes, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Frankie. Yes, comedy is in the eye of the beholder, and yes, it is completely up to the audience what they find funny. Which means that if there's people that don't find your jokes funny, then they just don't come to your shows. However, some people want to hear a certain type of comedy, and they want to go to specific shows. For example, mine. However, I have a lot of trouble uh, booking in clubs belonging to people that are friends of yours. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird that, isn't it? I mean, yeah, comedy is in the eye of the beholder, but, you know, it's very, very hard to get in front of the eyes whenever, whenever you know, so much of the comedy industry is controlled by people of a certain proclivity. I meant leftists. I knew there was going to be some comments. Uh, stating that he was a mainstream comedian. Yes, he is a mainstream comedian. Uh, well, he's certainly became one. Not just in name. Uh, Miss Willoughby, 41, has previously defended sexual abuse victims and spoken about her humiliating experience of upskirting when paparazzi crouched to take pictures of her underwear. Uh, she should have fly kicked them, to be honest, you know. Just a stiletto in the eye. Uh, Boyle's joke was heavily criticised by Conservative MP Caroline Knox, chairman of the Women and Equalities Committee. Well, of course. Boy, the chair chairman of the Women and Women and Equalities Committee. I wonder what her opinion might be on this rape joke. <laughs> Miss Noakes, who Miss <laughs> uh, <laughs> attended the University of Sussex at the same time as the comic, said the Frankie Boyle I was at university with wouldn't have found rape funny. It never is, and I'm disappointed that anyone would try to make a joke out of male sexual violence. You can make a joke out of anything. People just might not like it. All I care, I don't care if people don't like the jokes. If people want to say that joke was horrible, that joke was bad, blah, blah, whatever, that's fine. It's when people try and start to... It's not just enough for people to just not go see a comedian. 
uh, they have to stop other people from going to see the comedian. That's that's when I start to have a problem. Because then instead of you just deciding what you what what media you partake in, you're trying to control what, what media other people can partake in. And that makes you an authoritarian and a little bit of a loser, to be honest. Uh, a spokeswoman for the Fem for the Fembrave Fe Fembrave Insist campaign group Philia said we are horrified that some men in the entertainment industry continue to consider the abuse of women to be comedy material because in certain contexts it can be funny. These people don't know how jokes work. Right? Seeking cheap applause at the expense of traumatising women speaks of low quality material and yet it gets laughs. Uh, there is nothing funny about male violence. Women and girls around the country are not laughing. Instead, women are angry and scared for their safety. Sounds like you need to laugh a little. It's like you need to get a little bit, you know, you wouldn't be so angry and traumatised and scared all the time if you if you maybe just, you know, laughed at a few jokes. Uh, it's not the first time the Glaswegian comedian has made a rape joke. In 2012, he posted a tweet referring to Olympic cyclist Victoria Pendleton in which he said, Victoria can lift twice her own body weight. Sexy as it means she still won't, wouldn't be able to throw me off. That's funny. Come on, that's funny. I'm going to say 2012, that was... That was back, I think it was about 2014 that Frankie started to change. So that, see that, that's a classic good Frankie joke. This modern Frankie, he's, he's, he's nothing like he used to be. And it's sad, <clears throat> but hey-ho. You know, sometimes, you know, when your ideals aren't fashionable and acceptable anymore, that can threaten the paycheck, so better, better change the ideals to the current thing. Oh no, this thing that was totally fine for me to do for 10 years is now going to cost me money. No, wait, I'm not offensive anymore. Ha ha, Tories are bad. Am I, am I right, my fellow working class? Uh, elsewhere in his Latitude Festival set, Boyle defended people's right to be offended by jokes, but he admitted that he had stopped posting gags on Twitter in order to avoid repercussions. Pussy. Uh, he cited one example where he considered making a joke about the death of Sir Sean Connery. Even though Sir Sean Connery is a Scottish icon, you know, you just give him a little slap. <laughs> you know, um, like, I would have made jokes, I just, I was having a Twitter off day, I have off days on Twitter. Uh, Boyle also told the audience he had never been so overwhelmed with the feeling that his work had been misunderstood before making a series of dark jokes about Prince Andrew. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand what you mean. Uh, for example, I really hate it and it really hurts my feelings when big mainstream comedians that I once looked up to uh, misunderstand my work, sometimes so badly that I believe it's on purpose, and then start th saying things like, I'm a Nazi, or say saying that uh, the Scottish comedy scene is being overtaken by alt-writers, and when I asked you to name just one, you blocked me on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I really hate it when my work's misunderstood as well, Frankie. Because here's the funny thing is, I make the same jokes you do. I make the exact same type of jokes. You want to sit there and call me a Nazi and call me a racist and call me these other things, Frankie? I learned it from watching you, right? You were one of my inspirations. So was Jim Jeffries. So was Sasha Baron Cohen. And the thing that hurts the fucking most is all three of you have decided this thing that made us millions of pounds and is our legacy, we've decided it's bad now and you're not allowed to do it anymore. Right, my three, my three inspirations. The only one who hasn't, the only inspiration who hasn't turned into an absolute you know, quivering pussy is Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks still holds true to all the jokes that he made. Uh, but then again, he's old as fuck. He, he doesn't care anymore. Uh, the comic who has previously made jokes about the Queen and Katie Price's disabled son, Harvey, clearly a case of uh, punching up there, Frankie, uh, acknowledged that his new material might get him into trouble at the Edinburgh Festival, which starts this week because the Fringe is on. And I don't play the Fringe. The reason for that is because this is Scotland and the speech laws here are not great. And we've just recently had the hate crime bill. Now, this is the thing is, even if you are clearly joking, even if there is no genuine intended hate or malice behind your words, um, it's not safe for me to uh, do comedy in Scotland. That's why I don't. I've never done a gig in Scotland. I've done shit tons of gigs in England and some in America and all that. Scotland, it's just, uh, it's just far too risky.
But yeah, this is Frankie Boyle, like who just the week beforehand says that he didn't believe that cancer culture was real. And one of the amazing things is everyone goes, "What about you? You've got a big, massive YouTube channel and blah, 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 and all this stuff," which is like saying to how a murder victim, you know, an att attempted murder victim, how can murder be real? Because like you didn't actually die, and then you went and got like a big, high-paying job as a lawyer. So how's murder? Is fucking stupid, right? That is a dumb argument. But as a case, of, like, I've never understood well, to prove that cancel culture isn't real, they provide examples of the times it didn't work. <laughs> right? It's a case of, oh, but you didn't. And it's like, okay, but they tried to. They tried to. They tried to cancel me. They tried to shut down my YouTube channel and make sure I could never earn money or get a job again. Yeah, okay, but you have a job and you're earning money. Yeah, okay, but they tried to make sure I couldn't have that. Yeah, well, you weren't cancelled because you have a job and you're making money. Okay, but they tried to make sure that I couldn't. And there you go, the roundabout argument, which you'll see everywhere on Twitter. Right, that's the, and the thing is, here they are, they're trying to cancel him. The fact is, the attempt was made. People, whenever these articles come out, people are trying to get him shut down. People are trying to stoke controversy. And I guarantee you, there's an awful lot of people out there who want to see Frankie, you know, booted out, no shows, no TV appearances, because he said something in the past that made them feel a little bit sad for 30 seconds. However, you know... Ah, you know what it is. You know, you know how it is. You know, see when comedians start advocating for control of comedy, they, they always eventually, you know, fall on their own sword. What, what, what was the, what was the thing that Churchill, that Winston Churchill said, an appeaser is someone who uh, feeds the alligator, hoping it eats him last.